Hi guys, what's up? This is Screen Guard Guy coming to you with a changelog analysis. Uh, I wasn't originally going to do one. Um, I know a lot of casters, people in the Dota community have already done one. But I did get a request to do it maybe from more of a Dota 1 angle. Uh, that I'm not sure if people have done it from that perspective. I'll be talking a bit about the new heroes, a bit about... The uh, about the new heroes, a bit about the new heroes who have been introduced into Captain's mode, a little bit about heroes who maybe have not been ported to Dota 2, such as the Phoenix. I'll be talking a little bit about some of my favorite uh, changes overall. I will not be going into an extreme detail on all the heroes. I would love to, but it, this video would end up being 60 minutes. If you guys really, really want to see me talk about pretty much every single thing in the changelog analysis, I don't actually mind doing that, um, but we're just going to cover s most of the meatier aspects of it, shall we say. Let's start with the uh, changes to gameplay and cosmetics. Goblin Shredder as well as Skyrath Mage have been added to the Captain's Mode. Do I love this change? I love new heroes being added to the Captain's Mode. Do I think these will impact the metagame a lot? No, not really. Let's think about some of the heroes who came in from the last change log 6.74. What is 6.73? If you guys remember, it was around um, a very, very long time ago, Christmas time, uh, it was when these heroes, Goblin Shredder as well as Skyrath Mage, were introduced. Wisp, t I Wisp Disruptor as well as Rubik were then just introduced to the Captain's Mode, and they completely changed the name of the game. Rubik, of course, everyone was looking forward to that. The spell steal, Wisp with that uh, global presence was... I don't think out of nowhere people were thinking about it, but the wisp Ricky combo, I'm not sure if people actually saw that. It was cool, it had an impact within the first month, and it was just pretty awesome. Do these heroes have the same potential? In my mind, I do not see so um, so much. Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about Goblin Shredder. Very, very much a situational pick. Uh, he does a lot of pure damage. Does he scale that well to late game? Not really. Three of his skills, three of his four skills do an intense amount of pure damage. Does that help him win the lane? Ish, yes, no. He does seem like a, a very, very much a correct counter to somebody, let's say, with high magic resistance. He doesn't deal a lot of burst damage is a problem, and his skills can be a little bit hard to land. Does he give AoE teamfight presence? His ultimate kind of does, and it does have a fairly low cooldown. That can be great for pushing up. I feel we will not see him as much. Let's say in comparable, I'd say to maybe... A Centaur Warchief. He does have sort of a semi-tankish position. I do believe he can be quite a tank. Uh, much like Axe, if you come close to him, you're going to regret it. You're going to have a bad time. He can come close to you uh, just by shooting out a chain and jumping and then suddenly pure damage. Can he win the lane? Is it enough? Does he have enough HP? He feels like a hero who does need a lot of support. He does need sort of be built upon. And at the end of the day, he's not that great a shield. He doesn't stand up to the test of time like a lycanthrope. He doesn't give you a big game-changing ultimate much like the Enigma. But then again, I mean, not all heroes can do this. Um, will he actually be a big, big impact into the captain's mode? If teams maybe come up with some killer legit strategy, by all means, I can't really see one at this moment. I haven't paired, I, admittedly, I haven't paired him up with every single hero. I'm still thinking Magnus plus Goblin Shredder Something, you know, the two of those guys can come together and they can make, you know, ends meet. Or maybe with Thrall, if you can trap like two or three people inside that little kinetic field, maybe you can throw out your ultimate spinning disc, do, 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 pure damage, you know. But if you can trap three heroes inside a kinetic field, that is a, that is a big if. Um, and Sand King jumping in there could also do quite a bit. Faceless Void, who knows. Uh, sky's the limit, really. Not so sure about this Goblin Shredder pick. I'm hoping we'll see him. I love variety. I love new strategies. I love to be surprised. Skywrath Mage, let's talk a little bit about him. Does he fulfill the carry aspect? He scales a little bit better to late game than the Goblin Shredder does. And his ultimate is one of the most devastating ultimates in the game. 1200 damage over 2 seconds. Keep in mind, it's evenly split. But if you can hit it, if you can get it off, and there are lots of players out there with the skill. And I am anticipating a little bit more plays from the Sky, uh, Skywrath Mage. I was talking to a friend, he believes that this guy is the bee's knees, he'll be picked for everything, he'll be the game changer, the go-to hero. Really? I mean, in my opinion, I've never had trouble dealing with the Skyrath Mage. He's an intelligence hero who has no life, kind of easy to gank, no natural escape mechanism. Uh, keep in mind, though, he does have that uh, that one skill, which is the Glyph one. Um, which silences you for 6 seconds, and then you take 36% extra magic damage, combined with his slows, combined with all of his skills. He is a, he's, he's very much a carry. He's got a lot of burst damage potential. 
Well, not really burst damage, but he's got a lot of damage potential. He has a lot of potential to win lanes, uh, it, it, to play, I think, even the solo lane with good warding. But he's a very, very frail hero. A few stuns, a Ventral Spirit, and a Sven. It's kind of a, it's kind of a deal breaker. I mean, we see Lina is also uh, quite a fringe pick, and she deals a lot of burst damage. She has great spells. I, you can compare, I think, Skyrath Mage to the Lina. They'll probably be picked around this many times, uh, about equal number of times. Uh, so, are these heroes real game changers? Are they Wisps? Are they Mar Are they Wisps? Are they Rubik's? Are they Thralls? The Disruptor? Nah, not really, in my opinion. Let's talk a little bit about Captain's Mode. First ban now has two bans instead of three. Uh, Captain's Mode second ban phase, ban phase has three bans instead of two. I hate this change. Why do I hate this? Because I very, very recently started playing Captain Mode games, and I love being able to ban out three. Why? So then I don't have to deal with different strategies. I don't have to deal with the Naga, and I don't have to deal with the Lycan. They can ban out the Morphling. I don't care. They can ban out the Weaver. We can see these standard bans, Windrunner, Earthshaker, all these heroes. So... By not having, by only having two bands instead of three, means we're going to see more of these uh, sort of strategies. But keep in mind that the second band phase now has three bands instead of two. This is just as big, if not bigger, than having two bands instead of three. The reason why is you can now ban more reactionary to it. And I've always felt that this was a. <clears throat> whenever I watched a game, I always felt this was a limitation. I can I can be told nothing. You can tell me the bands, the first three bands. And that means nothing to me. You tell me the next two bands, I can tell you, okay, they're trying to avoid a team fight. They're looking to pick up this. They're looking at this. How, how's the reactionary play? You know, you can see, okay, this guy needs supports. I mean, they're, they're obviously going for a tri-lane of sorts with Lycanthrope. Let's get rid of any good supports they have. Oh, they pick Chaos Knight. Let's get rid of the Ancient Apparition. These kinds of, of things, it can be more reactionary. You can tailor it. Um, you won't be able to get off all your respect bands. That's cool. But you can get rid of maybe the things that make these respect bands respectable. Oh, so he's a great Morphling. Let's get rid of everybody who can help him farm. And we'll go gank the Morphling. It's that simple. So we're going to be seeing some pretty new gameplays, uh, new gameplay standards. I'm not sure, so sure how fast teams will adapt, if they'll adapt at all, if I'm correct. But that is what I'm, I am anticipating. That's what I'm hoping for. We're going to be seeing more tailored bands, essentially. Glyph duration increased from 4 to 5 seconds. None of this really, really matters. Um, Aegis reclaim time decreased from 10 to 6 minutes. This is my favorite favorite change. Uh, now I said I'm going to talk about it from a Dota 1 perspective. This dips a little bit more into Dota 2. More Dota 2 teams love the Aegis. They love to fight and they love to hang on to it uh, for the 10 minute duration. And in that 10 minute duration, whoever doesn't have the Aegis usually wants to turtle. They don't want to take a fight. They don't want to be able, unless they are super aggressive and they know, okay, these guys are out of position. Let's kill them. Uh, if the team with the Aegis are sticking together, they're bunching up, they want to push, they're pressuring lanes, they're getting their farm. Uh, they're keeping the guy with the Aegis in check, they're keeping the other team in check, they have good warding. Really, the team without the Aegis has to be more defensive, because um, they can't really take a team fight, because otherwise it's 5v6. Can you take a team fight with 5v6? Maybe, maybe not. If you feel you can, sure. But most of the time, 70 to 80% of the time, teams will have to be more defensive. And there's a 10 minute standoff where everyone's just sort of kiting each other, they're shooting back and forth, because the team with the Aegis don't want to burn the Aegis. The team without the Aegis don't want to fight a team with an Aegis. So having this 6 minutes instead of 10, it's going to force team fights. It's going to make them cooler. It's going to be faster, more ganking orientated. It's it's going to make the game a little bit shorter. Now let's talk about the changes, which I do believe are the bigger changes for the game. These are the ones that are really, really going to shake up the meta game. Team AoE bounty for kills with two heroes from char uh, around change. Basically, you get more gold for doing an assist. Previously, you got 9 uh, times the level plus 95 of the hero. So let's say you're ganking in the level 10 hero, it's 950 times uh, 9, and that's the team AoE bounty. So everybody in the area gets, you know, this much divided by themselves. Now it's times 12 plus 125. So it's plus 30. Let's forget about that. 12 times. It's 3 times extra. <laughs> Does that, no, it's not three times extra as a multiplier, but it's instead of nine times, it's 12 times. So let's say if it was level one, right? One plus 95 times nine is like, I can't do math in my head. 180, 225? Now it's 12, so, so 125 times 12 is like 100. 200. It's like 300. Let's just say it's 300. I'll, I'm going to post up some correction or whatever when I do the math. 
that is, is a significant difference. I remember I did the math. I remember I sat down, and I remember I'm thinking, you're going to get your Force Staff so much earlier. Uh, for the carry, you're going to get your Lincoln Sphere or whatever the hell you want so much earlier. There's more of an incentive to do ganks because finally you will actually get more gold for ganks than for laning. Pudges, and especially for assisting, especially Pudges will want to carry a Crystal Maiden around. It's not that they'll get more gold, but the Crystal Maiden will be able to farm faster and she'll be able to get what she needs faster. She'll be get uh, whatever, Medallion of Courage, whatever she needs and which can in turn help uh, somebody else. Doing these assists is just so much better, uh, so much quicker, and it's going to change the nature of the game. Uh, supports sorely, sorely underestimated, I want to say. Windrunner, I mean, what can she do with farm? What can she do without farm? The difference is phenomenal. What can she do with a mech? What can she do with mech components? It is completely, completely different, and this could be the change. Let's also talk a little bit about the, uh, I mean, the killer bounty level multiplier. This is great for heroes such as Pudge. For You know, I mean, it encourages more ganky. That's very, very good. But what I want to talk about, what I want to stress, is that the supports will be getting more of an advantage. They'll be getting their farm on. How often have you, have I, I mean, I, if you guys have watched my games, some of the games I commentate, I get so frustrated that my poor, poor Earthshaker, 15, 20 minutes in, these aren't my games, these are games I'm watching. Uh, for my games, I will never get this item because I'm really, really bad at farming. Uh, Earthshaker gets like 15, 20 minutes in before he gets his arcane boots. It takes me like an hour, but that's a bit of an exaggeration. Like they won't usually take 15, 20 minutes, but they take an inordinate amount of time, especially not they're having that good a game, especially if they're getting ganked because it's an Earthshaker. He's, he's a little bit frail without items. Usually all he have is boots. He may not even get his blink, but once he gets those items, just the blink and the arcane boots, it is a completely different hero. It is a monster to deal with. Suddenly you have an Echo Slam that can come out of nowhere. It's a game changer. And if he can get it faster, he can get that farm. More teams will have that underdog chance, shall we say, to come back. I mean, the other side will also get a gold advantage. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm just overestimating the entire idea of this. How big a game change this is. But hey... You know, I, I never I never profess to be that good. <laughs> Let's just say that. Total XP required for level 7 decreased from 2700 to 2600. Total XP for level 8 decreased from 3500 to 3200. I love this change for the exact same reason I said before. Supports will be getting their extra levels. Now, keep in mind, XP uh, still require 4400 to reach level 9. So you'll only be getting level 7 and level 8 quicker. You won't be getting your level 11 any quicker than you normally would have. Uh, since there was no... Um, experience multiplier change. Let's just talk a little bit about what level 7 or 8 means. It means that Windrunner will get her Shackle Shot maxed a little bit quicker. It means that uh, Crystal Maiden can get an extra level of Bite or maybe an extra level of Mana Aura. Let's just talk about what that means. It means like let's say an extra second or 0.5 seconds of a stun or disable. Team fights are decided on 0.1 of a second. You guys have seen it, I've seen it. The clutch TP's out, the slight channeling of the ultimate, the just not in range thrower storm ball. We've seen it so many times, the one right click away from death as they run. This 0.5 of a second, it could mean the difference between a team wipe and a team fight. That's that's the thing. So maybe we'll be seeing cooler, cooler fights. That's pretty much it, and that's what I'm hoping for. As I say, it's the ports, they really need this, and if they can get the, the faster levels, you know, that's plus to attributes, easier for time farming. Um, Urshaker does love to use his Fisher to farm. Maybe he'll just be able to use it a little bit better, a little bit quicker, getting a little bit more mana regen. Anyway, these are all stuff that I would love to talk about, such as the, uh, the crap, but it doesn't really matter. Let's talk a little bit about the new agility hero. First saw him, what stood out? Magnetic Field. This has actually been recently changed. Magnetic Field AoE reduced from 375 to 325. Um, and now it's the half of the attack speed for not not hearing this. But when I saw first saw this skill, I thought, this thing is broken. Seriously, this is for pushing or against pushing. It won't really help you win the lane as far as I can see. Maybe it might help in a team fight, but it is a very small AoE because you still have to stand and remain under this AoE. Now keep in mind, I do have to put this disclaimer. I have not yet played this hero. I have troubles with my Garena, so I won't be able to play this hero. I won't be able to give you guys an exact what can he do, what can he not do until I've had the chance to try him out for myself. Um, but <laughs> let's just talk about what this 100% evasion and bonus attack speed means. You, 
Notice that the glyph time is exactly the same as the duration time. It's only five seconds, but this thing has a 50 second cooldown. So that means once a push. For once a push, nothing can stop you. They can't touch you. Lycanthrope will run around like an idiot. It's like putting up smoke, like fog, Ricky Maru's fog, except for five seconds, and you all get this insane attack speed bonus. And keep in mind, Ricky Maru's fog is only like 80% invasions. It's 100% invasion. Everybody's going to have to get MKB after this. Um, it's such a great spell defensively. You just lay it down. No one can touch you. Is this a game-breaking, game-changing spell? Once again, I do have to see it in action. Do I do have to see how it goes. This guy's obviously been sort of um, suited towards being a carry. Uh, I This Flux is so such a weird spell to do. I, I have tried out the Flux, and that I haven't been able to use um, the hero against other people yet, but the Flux is... It's a bit of a weird spell. Having somebody there in an AoE of two... Um, sorry, in... In the AOE of 225, 225 is not particularly big, so it, it discourages people from grouping up. 50% slow is insane at level 1. Can you get a gank? Can you get a kill? Maybe. Uh, with a 50% slow for 6 seconds, <laughs> certainly you, you could try to do it if you had the fallout damage. Fortunately, he does not quite have the fallout damage. Spark Wraith, it does remind me a little bit of the um, remnant from the... You guys know the Storm Spirit. <laughs> Activation delay, 3 seconds. Uh, it takes 3 seconds to fully merge. Can you do something with this? Maybe, maybe not. You won't be able to set up ganks, but it kind of helps in the laning phase. Um, it's, it's, it's a suitable spell. I, I, I'm not particularly a big fan of this spell. I'm not sure if I'll be able to hit it, but it does do 300 magical damage. And that's a, that's a good enough nuke. Uh, if you can do it. It lasts up to 50 seconds before expiring. So that means he can, it's a legitimately some sort of award. I guess you can use it maybe to scout out the runes. 50 seconds is quite a while. Keep in mind the runes spawn every two minutes. But if you want to place it down there, let's say at the 30 second mark. It's every, uh, yeah, every two minutes. So let's talk about Temp uh, Tempest Double, his ultimate. This, I can't tell if I like it or I, or I don't. At level 3, it doesn't cost you anything to do. There's a cooldown of 55 seconds and duration of 20. And it's sort of like, well, it's sort of like creating the, a clone of you that is 100% and 100%. I know I like to say that um, Chaos Knight is my favorite, uh, has the strongest illusions in the game because he creates, you know, three a couple of clones of himself who take 200% damage, but they deal 100% damage. This guy's lasts longer, I believe. Actually, may have last... Don't quote me on that. I believe this guy's lasts longer. And they do the same. They take the same. They can use any spells or items he have and spawns with his health or mana after the cast. Two heroes. He looks exactly the same. They. L Is it a great hero to maybe carry with? Does it really help? Well, it just makes him more farm reliant. Um, that's pretty much what I want to say. He just becomes incredibly farm reliant. Um, the Zet, the Art Organ, because if your illusion sucks, you're kind of putting out another hero that also sucks, but only time will tell. I mean, certainly if you have two of yourself, they can use the same items, he multiple hexes. We're going to be seeing some pretty creative ways over the next, I think, few weeks of this hero. Can you imagine multiple hex, hex, hex? It's pretty much a refresher hex, having two free hexes, if you can get it. I would say that would be a great idea. Uh, multiple, let's say, Medallion of Courage. I don't know, you guys, sky's the limit, uh, really, when it comes to thinking about it. Or even if you get a mech on him, and you maybe, well, I mean, well you can't get a double mech, uh, an Urn of Shadows. <laughs> Extra charges for the Urn of Shadows. Uh, not so sure how that mechanic will interact, but there are definitely going to be some creative uses for him. Is he going to be owning the the pub scene? Not really. He's a, he's pretty complicated here to use, uh, and certainly to use correctly. As I say, he is, he's going to have a bit of a hard time winning the lane. He does need a, quite a bit of farm. He's an agility hero, though. And uh, let's just see what he does. And look at his, by the way, look at his agility. And keep in mind, he's an agility hero. In terms of intelligence, he has more intelligence. He, so I, I believe he, he's, he's kind of treated more of like a utility hero as opposed to the hard carry. Now let's talk about the Orth, the Winter Wyvern. Wyvern, Wyvern, Wyvern. It's a giant dragon. Okay, basically that's what it is. Let's talk about his Arctic Burn. This guy is much more of a carry in my opinion. But he's, he's an intelligence hero. Uh, he's incredibly slow. He has like a movement speed of 285. I thought he was moving in slow motion. It's like he's currently being hit by frost. So what are you going to get for this guy? You're going to get tranquil boots for him? Maybe, maybe not. I'm thinking phase. 
Uh, why do I think? Why am I thinking face? These are the. Um, where's this skill? Where is that skill? Here it is. Is it is the ultimate? Yes, it is the ultimate. Winter Wyvern strikes the battlefield with a maddening chill, cursing a target enemy. Yet that's not the skill at all. I was thinking. Is it the Arctic Burn? Let me see. Imbues you with the Deathly Chill. No, that's not it. Bonus attack me flame. Here it is. Here it is. Check your. Uh, yes, yes, this is the one. This is the one where you, you stand next to enemies and basically they get screwed up. Um, you want to be running around. I mean, it gives you bonus attack range and flying move and flying movement. Getting that extra move speed, being able to be mobile, being able to run around the place. I think that one's kind of a... It's not a bad idea. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, his Overall, his skills don't cost that much. Keep in mind, he does have quite a nice high base intelligence. His intelligence gain isn't bad at all. 425 attack range. And he gets a bonus attack range up to 1,000, which is just, wow, it's like Dwarven Sniper. Seriously, that stuff is good. Uh, slow, 40%. Uh, and HP burn, 6% of HP per second. I believe this is HP removal. It's if it's drain. So, you know, you're not going to actually, you can salve up, technically, while he's doing it. Uh, it does not count as damage. So, yeah, you can salve up, you can bottle charge. Just keep that in mind. Uh, it doesn't last that long, 6 seconds, but it only, and he has a cooldown of 30 seconds at level um, 4. So every single team fight, this guy's going to be running around phase boots. My recommendation. Now, you got to keep in mind um, the Splinter Blast. What am I going to talk about? It gains you life and splits off into active shards that deal heavy damage. Because if you look at the uh, initial, initial like the uh, split AoE is 500. That is huge. That is bigger than, the, than Rogue Knight's Cleave. Uh, the projectile speed, and it does 340. Splinting, splintering off 340 AOE damage in a... It, like, the Rogue Knight, when he throws a Storm Bolt, that's like a 375 AOE. That's like, it's a very, very... You know, it's like a 200... It's a very small AOE. Imagine bigger than that, and it splinters off. And they'll get slowed for 2.5 seconds. Is this guy built for team fights or what? You know, he shoots that in and just runs around... Ah, ah, shoot, shoot, die, die... Um, particularly when you think about this uh, Winter's Curse. Now, everyone's been saying, you know, this is the Winter Curse really, really that good. Uh, you know, it's it only has an AoE of 350. It's not going to capture any, but it's only going to last for three seconds. It's a setup spell, in my opinion. I'm Keep in mind, I don't know jack shit. I haven't played this hero, so I can't tell you. Force Staff. Activate Winter's Curse. Force Staff him. Somewhere, or get a vacuum, right? And just vacuum them all in. I'm talking about Dwarven, um, sorry, Darkseer here. Vacuum them all in. Have them beat the crap out of their own teammate while you shoot a splinter blast right into their faces, and then you run around them and just rah, rah, rah. Think about it. Just think about that. I'm sorry for the uh, special effects, but this is what I like to think about as a Wombo combo. I mean, these heroes, sure, they're good overall by themselves. Um... You know, I mean, you look at Legion Commander, how, but you look, you gotta look also how they impact with other heroes who can help them do a Wombo combo, who these guys can be good with. Definitely this guy and um, Darkseer, definitely this guy and Thrall, because I love Glimpse, uh, definitely this guy maybe and Windrunner, because Shackleshawn too. There's a lot of different combinations, a lot of different follow-ups, and I'm gonna talk about Cold Embrace for a little bit. Uh, you can definitely save your hero, you can definitely save your character. You guys want to play him as a support? Sure, fine, do this. Um, but he only has one, and I feel this spell is a little bit out of place. It doesn't really wombo combo follow it up. I mean, if you look at this, the Arctic Burn, the Splinter Blast, and the Winter's Curse, they, they kind of synergize really, really well. Cold Embrace, it's, it's a good healing spell. Let's just say that. That 6% of the HP regen. I'd rather have Juggernaut's Healing Ward. If this was his main draw, Cold Embrace, not really my thing. But still, a lot of people say, you know, this is, this is a great skill. Um, I'm not going to disagree. 20 plus 6% of the max HP per second? Sign me up. I'm a rogue knight. I need to go gank. I'm going to stand in the front line. I'll blink in. Bam! I'm taking all the damage. I'm almost going to die. Sleep me. You know, I've, I've done my thing. I've thrown off my stun. Or, or let's say Earthshaker, right? He blinks in. Echo slam. Ah, chain stunning. Okay, Fisher. I'm going to die. I'm ready to die. No, you're going to sleep. Okay, I'll take I'll go to sleep. Blocking all physical damage, though. So keep in mind, you can get hit by magical damage. Um, but... This will probably, this regen is probably good enough. Okay, whew. Uh, not going to go through most of these heroes. I, I can if you guys want me to, um, but just keep in mind the, the duration. The duration. I'm doing this thing with my hands where I'm like making it really, really big. Um, so I'm not really going to 
talk about that. We're just going to talk a little bit about some of my favorite heroes and some of my favorite changes. And the ones that I think are going to... I mean, these things will, will have tremendous impacts on the, on the, on the metagame. And overall, who's going to get picked and who's not going to get picked. I really, really want to talk about some of these. Do you guys really want to hear about it? I don't know. If I'm doing it from a Dota 1 perspective, I really only want to talk about um, the heroes who are only in Dota 1. They're not really in Dota 2 so much. So if you guys really want to hear my thoughts on the big, big hero changes, I may put up another video saying, Big Hero Changes! And I'll just talk about all these guys and how they work and whatever. Here's my guy who I want to talk about. His name is Pit Lord. And he is my friend. Uh, no, he's not. I used to hate this hero because he's he's useless. Um, I've never had trouble dealing with him. I've never had trouble... I mean, when I play with him, I, I, I don't have that bad of a time. Because he's actually not that useless. Um, I'd say he wasn't that useless. Expulsion. It was actually a great wombo combo kind of thing. Explodes the corpses. It does deal, you know, a great amount of damage. Uh, my friend says, This thing's the bee's knees, man. He didn't actually use those words. He didn't also speak in my... Um, I don't know what kind of voice that is. I do it a lot. Um, he didn't speak in that kind of voice, but he basically he tried to explain to me that how expulsion is the most broken skill ever. You know, I agreed to disagree. Let's talk about his atrophy aura. <laughs> Ancients, neutrals, enemy units, and Roshan. Decrease 42%. This is, is this the most anti-carry hero or what? Their base attack damage, though. So any plus damage you want to pick up, let's say a Divine Rapier, no, nothing much. You're going to get some bonus damage, so you're going to be more of a right-click hero. I don't know how you're going to exactly fight against the Pit Lord once he has this thing on, especially if you want to combo him with, let's say, a Rubik, who's going to further your lower your attack even more. I'm just saying you better pick up a Vengeful Spirit or a Luna, man. Um, very, very, very situational um, kind of hero. This Atrophy Aura in itself, I f have a feeling... Let's not talk about what my feeling is. I have a feeling... Because I was going to say I have a feeling it's going to be reduced, but... In, Thinking about it again, it's not actually that broken a skill. Um, having minus 42% just means you have to be a little bit more creative. Um, whether or not that's true, who knows. Firestorm is no longer channeling. Uh, that's what I want to say. It's it's uh, cast range AoE. That's the, that's the big change you want to ca uh, compare it from before. Calls on six waves with da uh, fire, which damage in an area. Each wave deals initial damage and burn then burns for two seconds. Now keep in mind that when he had the... Sorry, here it is. Dark Rift. Okay, never mind. Forget about the Dark Rift. This change is not as big. Does not prevent the cooldown from being used. It only makes it so you no longer have to teleport everyone away. So they lost, basically. Uh, it's not as big, I feel. Um, since I've never really used the ultimate. <laughs> and I've never had trouble dealing with it. Uh, remarked how far... We worked how Firestorm works. Uh, basically, that now I think you can use it more as a harass spell. You don't have to worry about taking a crap load of damage. You don't have to stand in the same position. Uh, six waves, it's magical damage. Is it that good? Yes or no? You don't... Follow up maybe with a thrall. Um, overall, he still doesn't have enough, I think, spells to set it up, his Firestorm. So this is still a useless spell. But this is kind of broken. So make of that what you will. My next hero that I want to talk about, his name is Phoenix. Fire Spirits have been reworked, the Icarus Dive has been reworked, reworked, and the Sunray has been reworked. Now, there are some changes in the 6.75b. Uh, let me just find the Icarus Dive heal from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1 to just over in over 4 seconds. So, the same total heal, except a little bit faster. Is that it? Seriously? I, I swear there was a lot more than this. Nope, never mind. Okay, let's go back to Phoenix. What's his name? Icarus. It's not, his, his name is Icarus, but he's called the Phoenix. Does that make sense? Frack. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? Oh, and let me talk a little bit about the Phantom Lancer, because I was talking about this in a video with Diamond, uh, some heroes who are lesser picked, and we're like, Phantom Lancer will never come back, because, you know, if he comes back, he's kind of a, you know, a little bit broken, so I don't think we should do anything about the Phantom Lancer. 4.2? Seriously? Agility increase of 4.2? What does that mean? Well, he now has the highest agility increase in the game. He is much more attractive now. He's like, um... He's still like an ugly guy, uh, but he's got a Porsche, basically. Uh, he doesn't need as many levels to start becoming more survivable, start ganking on his own. As I say before, you know, the thing about him, you just buy 180 gold, dust, go with one or two of your friends, go out Phantom Lancer hunting. It's fun. It's 3.25. As I said before, games are decided on 0.1 of a second, so this 3.25 certainly could have a difference. Certainly the Phantom Lancer hits very, very hard. And he'll hit even harder with a 4.2. In terms of the pub games, oh, this guy has become broken because Phantom Lancer in pub games, it's not a bad hero to pick. 
in terms of captain's mode, will we actually see him? Yes, no, maybe so. I said I wasn't going to talk a little bit too much about the other heroes. I didn't mean to talk about the Fan Planter, but I really, really had to because he's one of my favorite heroes to play. I won't... Okay, I'll tell you guys how I play him, and certainly I'm going to get called a noob for this. I only play him when I rand him. When I do, I just go get the Ring of Health immediately. Then whatever I want. If I want a Battle Fury, I want a Vanguard. Usually I'll go Vanguard, then into the Fusal Blade. I skip the Radiance Relic because I like to go ganking early on. I do actually have a ganking build. Um, in which I get phase boots, but I don't really like to talk about that build because I've only used it five or six times. That was when I was sort of okay at Dota. Now I'm a little bit not not as good. Um, so I, I probably would never use the ganking build, but I still definitely have a late game carry build for the fan lines. I'm sure we all do. He's a great hero to play. Definitely experiment with him. 2.8 to 4.2. Come on. That highest edgy growth in the game. Let's talk a little bit about how these fire spirits work. Summons four spirits that take a circle around you. Each spirit can be launched independently at a targeted AOE. Affected enemy units take damage over time and their attack speed greatly reduced. What does that mean? You have four guys you can shoot out. Uh, it costs 15% of your current HP. All skills do with the Phoenix. Um, is it all skills? I know a significant amount of skills uh, definitely use up his current HP. Uh, don't forget, uh, but forget about that. It lasts about 12.5 seconds. Overall, is this a major change? Attack speed reduction is minus 150. Uh, the, having their attack speed greatly reduced, this can certainly help out in team fights. This is certainly very, very nice um, for chasing down heroes. Um, j if you want to finish them off. Is it that great? Yeah, actually, I kind of like it. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly hoping we're going to be seeing more of it in terms of the team fight ability, in terms of its potential, in terms of the combination it does with other heroes who can set you up. You know, that's basically what I want to say. Uh, Thrall? You know, you guys know that. Super Impact doesn't stack, just refresh the duration. So, you know, shoot them off one at a time. Uh, Icarus Dive has been reworked. Dive was really one of my favorite um, things to do. You were invulnerable in your dive state. It was kind of like having a, a morph. Now, you're you're no longer more invulnerable. His movement space is doubled and nearby allied units are healed, but all damage you take is amplified. So now you're going to have sort of a healing ability coming in. Uh, and it this ends instantly if Icarus casts Supernova. I'm not so sure if you can still stop it and you can come out at the other side. I haven't really experimented with that. Uh, that's what you're supposed to do. With, well, it's not what you're supposed to do, but you can use dive in the past as an escape mechanism where you dive and halfway through you cancel it and you're sort of, so you don't have to go back. Can you do this now? Moon speed is doubled. Uh, his movement is doubled. Makes me think that you're still going to be moving at the max movement speed, which is 522, uh, as opposed to having some sort of super high speed. It's not like a blink speed. It's more of a continuous movement speed. Once again, I don't really know about this dive thing. I haven't really tried it out for myself. Duration is 6 seconds. Damage application is 50%. You take 50% more from everything. But if you're moving that fast... Yeah, I could probably hit you with a storm ball. Heal is pretty good, so it's not as great of an initiation spell as it once was before when it disarmed everybody. That was a great initiation spell and had great team fight potential. I feel that the Phoenix did get nerfed slightly because of this, uh, but he wasn't really that much played in the start with. So I don't know what really Ashfrog was thinking. Sunray we reworked. <laughs> Channels of Sunray in the channel there in the targeted direction. But then again, keep in mind, Ice, Ice Frog is really, really, really smart, and this is probably a good thing. Okay, de deals DPS and slows all heroes in that path. Uh, the damage increases per second. Uh, this is pretty, pretty darn good, I guess. I guess. Uh, maximum channel time is six seconds. No, no, no real, I think, major changes, I think, from, uh, from what it was before. Uh, certainly being able to do this uh, max attributes per second is it. It could it could have some impact. Um, I do like it. It's a great her. I would I want to say it's actually a great harassing spell because it has a really really low cooldown. Uh, and of course it takes ten percent of your current HP. So keep an eye out for that. Um, don't worry. The Phoenix is fairly fairly tanky hero. Uh, try to get some heals on you. Let's talk a little bit about some other heroes that may impact the scene a little bit more. Okay, I just want to talk about. Should I talk about Sven? He's my... No, let's not talk about Sven. He's my favorite hero, but he's not going to be the one that I want to talk about. I want to talk about... Where is she? Here it is. Queen of Pain. Uh, really think Ice Frog maybe doesn't watch uh, Pinoy Dota because he gave her a little bit of a buff. <laughs> An extra 25 damage. Now, Shadow Strike is great, of course, for harassing your enemies in the mid lane. Uh, why is he great um, for... Harassing enemies in the mid lane because it gives you that slow. As a lot of players don't like to get it, they like to get Scream as well as the Blink. Sure, that's completely fine, but if you really, really want to have sort of that bit of a duel, 
it's the Queen of Pain uh, with the Shadow Strike. So maybe we're going to see that. I don't want to say we're going to see it a little bit more because she's really... How much more can we sh see her? She's everywhere. Let's talk about some... Other th Wait, what was it? No, what was that? What was that? Uh, there was a... Uh, sorry, there was a few more heroes who we see a lot within the uh, Southeast Asian scene, which is mainly uh, the people who are doing Dota 1 at this point. Uh, Bat Rider, we do see him a little bit, but he's sort of a yes-no kind of fringe pick. Can't even remember who it was. I should have written it down. Uh, instead, we are going to be doing this the old school style of going through, and I'm going to look. Ooh, by the way, Legion Commander. Uh, let's not talk about the Legion Commander, <laughs> because I could go on all day if I started to do this uh, stuff. Lycanthrope. Okay, let's, I feel we should talk about Lycanthrope, because he's sort of a big presence everywhere. This goes in a little bit about Dota 2. He can't jungle as efficiently as he could. Mana cost increase from 125 to 145. This kind of cripples him in terms of the jungling. One of the most powerful things about Lycanthrope was that his early jungling ability. Go into the woods. Doom, doom, doom. I was going to go um, try out a nice, cool strategy done by um, a guy on YouTube called Ninjax. Uh, I think he heard it from Dendi. It's a really, really awesome video. Uh, if you guys Google it, it's basically how to shut down Lycanthrope because Lycanthrope is very, very dependent on that having that jungle. Uh, those wolves are really, really good for grass. If it comes down to lane, going to do Roche. The summon wolves, actually, the fact that they have been nerfed uh, does is quite a blow to the Lycanthrope. Um, check out the health, health decrease. Uh, at level, maximum level, they have less health than they originally did at level 1. But they do have 50% magic resistance. I I feel they should have gotten 100% for all that. Um, but the shape... And uh, he no longer... He, before what used to happen... Uh, in, is when he died, uh, he came back with Aegis. He'd still be able to run around, but he just wouldn't look like a wolf. So they changed that. Was that a bug before? Hmm? I, I can't really say so. I, I try, try to talk about the Necrolite. I really, really love his change uh, with the Saddest. You guys can read about that. If you guys want my opinion on it, it's a really, really, really long talk. Uh, I don't want to give my opinion on Nurian Assassin because he doesn't really appear so much in the Southeast Asian scene, and any other heroes, as far as I can see, Rubik, no, no son, nobody really, Spirit Breaker, really, I want to talk about, he's, I could spend an entire day talking about him, let's, let's forget about that guy, for now, going down, nope, so nobody else, now let's just talk about the new item, it's called Shadow Amulet, uh, there's been so much talk, uh, Dota commentaries, um, when this change lock came out, we were just like, oh, what about this? What about this? And I was talking about um, one of the staff members, Atre, who insists, you know, this is the bee's knees, the best thing ever, you know, the plus 30 attack speed, heroes such as Dwarven Sniper, it's the great escape mechanism. I'm like, I don't know, it's got a 2.75 fade out of time. I mean, I know it has no cooldown, no mana cost, but 2.75, it's basically a meld, right? So why can't you get dust over there and then they'll kill your Dwarven Sniper ass? I don't know, uh, you, you won't be a very, very squishy hero, maybe if you had a blink, and you have to stand still for 2.75 seconds while they smack you in the face, you know, I mean, you can still cast spells, so maybe if you got a 2.75 stun, like a Chaos Knight, but would Chaos Knight ever get the Shadow Amulet? I, I don't feel that way. Um, today, somebody just said, what about on Pudge, this is gonna be so broken. Pudge standing around invisible, I must say, for 1600. Standing around invisible. Oh, also, there's also the potential to teleport out. Like, you, you use it, you wait your 2.75 seconds while they're bashing you, and then you teleport out. Because, like, 2.75 seconds, I can kill people in 2.75 seconds. If not, I can deliver dust to myself and just... Phew. But, whatever. The plus 30 attack speed, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk about Pudge for now. Standing still, invisible, let's say, waiting in a creep camp. Like, he goes into a creep camp, and he just sits there. Like, a small camp. And he's just invis. Right, right next to them. You don't know, and you just come in. That's that's insane. It's got no cooldown. Keep in mind, so you can be invisible indefinitely. Is could this be a potential waste of time? Like Pudge is just stuck there. Yeah, but he can always move out. It has no mana cost. He's not losing anything. You can wait there maybe ten seconds. Has some warning up. He sees okay. He's coming. He's coming. I'm just gonna stand here invisible. I'll come out with the rot like out of nowhere. And they'll start whacking you, start to run away, I'll dismember you, and you keep running, I'll hook you, and then if you're still alive, I'll just GG, because if you can take all that, there's no point in me playing this game. That's how it is. So it's, it could be a great item, and plus 30 attack speed, of course, is great for heroes, such as um, the people who would be getting the Shadow Blade, which is um, Dragonite, which is Dwarven Sniper, uh, although I don't advocate getting Lothar's Edge on the Dwarven Sniper. I mean, it's, it's an okay item for escaping, I guess, but... 
Dust, really? Nobody ever heard of dust? Uh, um, but, you know, whatever. How shall we say? Black Team Bar can no longer be sold. This is one of my other really, really favorite changes. You can still drop it um, and then buy a new one. You can't sell it, though, so you'll have to commit another 3,900 gold. It's going to make the games a little bit more interesting. I mean, there's a lot of things that already go through mag uh, magic immunity. A lot of, but, you know, you won't be able to have to fight with those 10-second charges as much. Uh, does it impact the Dota 1 scene? Don't want to say so much, um, but there are a lot of heroes such as, like, Queen of Pain who really get picked, um, who just deal a crap load of magic damage. So, you know, Black King Bar not having it could be a good thing, could be a good thing, could be bad. Don't really feel there's any other really, really major changes that I want to talk about. Tell if there's anything you actually want me to cover. I will happily make another video. If you guys want me to go through some other heroes, or you want me to go through all the heroes, uh, just say so, and I'll see if I can get somebody else in to do this, because I feel you guys might get a little bit bored listening to my voice all the time. I really, I mean, like, Torn Chieftain stuff or whatever, because those guys had big changes. So thank you very, very much for listening. I can't believe you guys got through all this. I'm going to go have dinner. Thank you. I'll see you guys again next time.